First, I'm going to talk about downplaying. Now, when somebody tries to downplay you, like I talked about before, this is when they basically try to make it seem like whatever relationship you had or whatever they did for you was less than it really was. This is going to be designed to get a response from you. They basically want you to feel like everything was a lie and like you don't actually have any ground with them or you don't actually have any value with their in their life. What that is going to do for most people is cause them to try to fight for value. This is how a player gets control over you and causes you to end up chasing them, to end up fighting for their affection, to end up feeling confused and not understanding what's happening and what happened in the relationship. The way to combat this is by agreeing. Now, a lot of people might say, what? what? Why should I agree with them if they downplay me? Because they're trying to downplay you. They're trying to make you feel like you're less than. They might hit you with something like, oh, we were just friends anyway, or well, I was never really serious about this situation or, you know, this wasn't a real relationship. When they try to downplay you in that way, they're trying to get you to argue with them and fight back. They're trying to get you to say stuff like, no, it was a relationship. No, you were serious about me. We were engaged. You love me. How you going to do me like this? How you going to play me like you didn't love me all this time, girl? You wrong. That's what they're trying to get you to do. So what you want to do instead is agree. When you agree, it actually reverses it and downplays them. So when they say, well, this wasn't really a relationship anyway, and you say, well, I know, so I understand where you're coming from. They're like, what? You were supposed to get sad. You were supposed to get upset. You were supposed to fight for my affection. You were supposed to fight for a place in my life, but you just agreed with me like you didn't care. Now that leaves them to have to think, was it really a relationship? Do they care about me? Were they seeing somebody else? Now, instead of feeling like they just dumped you and kicked you to the curb, they're feeling like maybe you did that to them or maybe you didn't really care all along. Now you kind of reversing that game on them. You're hitting that ego and it's taking away a lot of their power and a lot of their ability to start playing you. All they wanted to do was get you to feel like you were less than, to feel like you were powerless, so you would puff their ego up by chasing them. But when you just kind of fall back and go, oh, okay, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, and you agree with them, it makes them feel less than. It deflates that ego a little bit so they don't continue to have the power to play you because now they don't even know if you really like them. Next, I'm gonna talk about bomb dropping. This is when a person pretty much says anything to get a reaction. You think things are going well in the relationship, they try to make you feel some type of way by just dropping some type of news on you or saying something to you to get a reaction. You think you broke up and you're moving along with your life, they try to say something to get a reaction out of you to make you feel a certain type of way. Bomb dropping is usually really effective in just confusing the person and making the person feel just weird and not know where they stand. That's why people do it. It kind of gives them the upper hand because once again, just like with downplaying, you start chasing them because you start trying to figure out an answer. You start trying to figure out what happened here. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? I'm not getting it. I don't understand. So with bomb dropping, you can do one of two things. One is an easy way to go and, you know, I really recommend it. I'm going to also tell you the other one too, just in case you want to use it. You can do one, which is ignore. When you ignore bomb dropping, it basically tells them that they have no effect on you no matter what they do. It's pretty cool because it kind of downplays them and it downplays whatever it is they're trying to do. So if they say some stuff like, I'm getting married tomorrow, you say, oh, congratulations. You don't really even worry about it. You don't, and internally you're not accepting their reality. You have to do this also. Anytime you try to ignore a bomb dropper, you have to not accept their reality. Because if you try to ignore them, but you're actually accepting whatever it is they're saying and whatever it is they're doing, then you're going to kind of get caught up in a situation where you're not really ignoring them. You're just acting like you're ignoring them. You get me? So you want to make sure that you don't accept their reality and you ignore whatever it is they say. And the way you ignore it is by just going along. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up. Okay, whatever. Not saying anything, going quiet on them whatever you want to do, but just ignore whatever it is. Don't give them the energy that they're looking for. The next thing you could do, and some people might have something against this. Some people might say, oh, but this is childish or it's petty or whatever. But hey, it kind of works, you know. Uh, bomb drop back, okay? They say something like, I'm getting married tomorrow or whatever. You say, you know what? I was thinking about getting married. Just, just bomb drop back. They don't even know what you're saying. They're like, is this serious? Is this person joking? I mean, what is this? You know, just whatever they do, you can kind of mirror whatever they're saying. 
whenever they try to bomb drop, oh, um, you know, I never really liked you anywhere. Or you're stupid or whatever, whatever. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know, I was thinking the same thing about you. You know, you could just bomb drop right back. It seems weird. It seems like a petty thing that somebody wouldn't fall for or wouldn't go in for, but they almost always do because they're looking for this reaction when they do this bomb dropping thing. And when you just mirror them and bomb drop right back, they kind of fall into it because they're trying to get you to fall into their reality. They're trying to get you to accept this reality that they've created. But when you kind of throw it back at them, everything they're doing is fictional. So they don't know if you're serious. They don't know if they said something that triggered you into telling them the truth. They're like, oh, I'm about to get married tomorrow. Oh, you know what? I was thinking about getting married. Congratulations. I was thinking about getting married too. Are you really getting married? See, they're lying. So they're like, wait, is this person telling the truth? I don't, I don't know. You know, they don't know what's going on in that situation. They're trying to get a reaction. And when they don't get a reaction that they wanted, or they get something that's so far off of what they were expecting, it kind of throws them off and they become confused. But with this, you have to also make sure that you do not accept their reality. Whatever it is they tell you, understand that there's some kind of trick to it. Even if they are getting married tomorrow, there's some kind of trick involved in it. So make sure you don't accept their reality. So if you decide to ignore or you decide to bomb drop back or mirror them, then make sure that you just don't accept their reality and whatever you do, you stick to. I mean, straight face. Like, yeah, I might get married too. And the last one I want to talk about is comparing. This is basically when somebody uses another person as a measuring stick for you. It basically causes you to feel bad a lot of times because they put this person on a pedestal and use them to put you down. Now, if you want to stop somebody from doing this or if you want to take a lot of the power out of it, call their bluff. Call that person's bluff. If they try to say, oh, my ex was better at this or they were better at that or whatever the case may be, or, uh, you know, somebody else I wanted to date looked better in a bikini than you did or this person works out more than you or whatever, they, you know, whatever crap they try to throw at you. Then you call their bluff. You say, oh, well, I think you probably should date them. You know, not in a mean way, not in an angry way. Why don't you get back with your ex? I think, you know, it seemed like y'all was pretty compatible. I don't understand why y'all don't get back together. When you call that person's bluff in that way, when you make that person have to say, now they have to backpedal. Because they either have to say, I can't get with this person, or they're not everything they were cracked up to be. When you start really showing a person that, hey, you're not breaking me down. You're just making me feel like you're not telling the truth or like you're trying to break me down. I get what you're doing here and it's not working. So if you go ahead and call that person's bluff, there's a reason why they're not back with their ex. Clearly, if they were that great and they were all the stuff they're trying to make it seem like they are, they would be with that person if they could be. So there's a reason why they're not back with them. Either they can't be or they don't really want to be. So when you take away that ability to compare by calling that person's bluff, you're taking your power back and you're taking theirs away. Now they can't use that to beat you over the head with anymore because you're not going and it's not working. They only want to do these things to elicit a certain response. And when they don't get that response, they will stop because it's not, they're not winning anymore. So when you take that and you call their bluff, you're showing that person that, hey, I realize that what you're doing here is trying to make me feel some type of way. And it ain't working. Now, when you're dealing with game players, of course, the people are going to put in the comments section, don't do all of this, just walk away. Obviously, if you've been dealing with this and you're watching this video, it's because you might be struggling to walk away. This will help you if that's what you want to do and also help you get the upper hand in the situation, help you get control over your own emotions and your own feelings so that somebody can't keep playing these games with you or the next person doesn't come in and try to do that same thing. So it's a good thing for you to just kind of get control of your own self, get control of your situation and start figuring out how to get the upper hand in these situations so they don't continue to come up. Now, you can walk away and I know it's going to be some people that's, that's always their advice. Just walk away. Okay, but if that's not what you're trying to do right now, or you don't feel like you're ready for that, these things will help you get control, get your power back, so that you can make whatever decision you want to in the future. Hopefully, I was able to help you out. Once again, it's your man, Chaz Ellis. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with somebody else. Peace.